it's my utmost. You know, I was thinking that in sharing, I had read a passage from Tozer and was sharing on what God really would speak to all of us, and it convicted me of a lot of things that I know are wrong in my life. <clears throat> But also, because Tozer was looking at the world at large, it was something that reminds me that you know, we are just passing through this world, that we need to be careful and mindful of the fact that we don't live here, that this is just a temporary dwelling place, that this isn't our eternal abode, but this is just a, a tent you know, that we're living in. This body is just a tent. It's not something that's going to last forever. And neither is your home or your house or your car or your job that as easily as a tornado came from heaven and set down upon the earth and destroyed everything that was in its path so too likewise god destroys things that he says we should not be attached to and we're reminded that we are eternal though the possessions we own are not and we need to be reminded of that sometimes i think in our devotionals and emotionals that god loves us but God doesn't love what we own because that's his we're just temporary custodians of what he's given us and there will be a day when we come to heaven that we are going to give back an accounting for what we have those things that God has allowed us to possess in our lives and then we will share it with Jesus and the day will come he said when he will put it into fire and test it to see whether or not it be gold whether it be silver, whether it be precious jewels, or whether it be wood, hay, and stubble of our own making. So really a lot, I think, of what we do is a lot of wasted time. If God speaks to you in an emotion and causes you to think on these things, then take the time to ask Him what it is He would have you to do. In utmost, the undeviating test for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Jesus, from Matthew 7-2. This statement is not a haphazard guess. It is an eternal law of God. Whatever judgment you give, it is measured to you again. There is a difference between retaliation and retribution. Jesus says that the basis of life is retribution. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. If you have been shrewd in finding out the defects in others, remember that will be exactly the measure given to you. Life serves back in coin you pay. This law works from God's throne downwards. Psalms 18, 25, 26. Romans 2 applies it in still more definite way and says that the one who criticizes another is guilty of the very same thing. God looks not only at the act, he looks at the possibility. We do not believe the statements of the Bible to begin with. For instance, do we believe the statement that the things we criticize in others we are guilty of ourselves? The reason we see hypocrisy and fraud and unreality in others is because they are all in our own hearts. The great characteristic of a saint is humility. Yes, all those things and other evils would have been manifested in me but for the grace of God. Therefore, I have no right to judge. Jesus says, judge not, that you be not judged. If you do judge, it will be measured to you exactly as you have been judged. Who of us would dare to stand before God and say, my God, judge me as I have judged my fellow men? We have judged our fellow men as sinners. If God should judge us like we would, like we would them, we would be in hell. God judges us through the marvelous atonement of Jesus Christ. You know, I read that and I think about all the times that I share with people on the basis of whatever God is telling you to do, that you should do. I think about all the aspects of I can see so many realities of what they are trying to do because I've been there and seen in me the same things and what they don't do. And a lot of times people don't like to be reminded of what they have done because they don't see that there can be, in sharing and caring for someone, the possibility of advising them that, hey, I've been there, you don't want to do that. But if you really insist, you can go and do as God leads you to. But 
If you do, you will suffer consequence. And I think that's what breaks my heart when I write the things that I do to people sometimes in writings or correspondence or internet or postings is that I can see already the end of what they have said from the beginning of what they just begin to portray it to be. And that breaks my heart because they have no idea what they are saying and doing. Because in portent, meaning that in the content of the words that they are portraying, they are held accountable. Because Jesus said every idle word that we spoke would be held to us accountability. And in such, out of our heart, the abundance of it, our mouth speaks. So as we are inside is what we speak on the outside. And as we write, sometimes that's who we are. So what I like to do is I like to reprogram it backwards and say, yes, I am critical at times and I am judgmental and I am these things and I portray and tell everyone that as a sinner I am and by grace I am saved and that not of myself because God imputed to me righteousness. Not me, because I know I'm the chiefest of sinners. <laughs> I can sin every time that I just look at ungodliness and sinfulness in others or in myself. And know that I am highly critical of those things that I see. But the person, oh, the person, God forbid that they should ever abide in a place where they would be sent to hell. Because that's not what I want. I would that God would save all. And if not, then at least give the opportunity for the person to decide by love that they don't want heaven, but they do choose eternal damnation. Because it is true, we are not to judge ever. Jesus said it. He knows we will, and that's why he said, with what measure you meet. But the commandment from Jesus was judge not. And so you can invent excuses and come up with religious reasons, but the only thing I can say is, you don't want to go there. When the judge of all creation stands before you and says, judge not, it's a warning. I think we ought to listen. Don't you?